Hey, what's up everyone? My name's Mike. I'm a designer in Toronto. Thank you so much for all the love on the last video I shot, which was my room tour. I got a lot of great positive comments. I even got a lot of DMs telling me that they watched it all the way through. I wasn't expecting so many of you to sit through a 40 minute video, but you proved me wrong. You guys are incredible. Um, really great feedback on that. So definitely motivating me to keep shooting more YouTube videos for you guys. And one of the reasons why I originally wanted to start shooting YouTube is because of course I started uh, creating content on Twitch at the beginning of the pandemic. And as things started to get a little bit more back to normal, I would say in air quotes, uh, the schedule got harder to keep up with and I still wanted to make videos, but I wasn't able to commit to the schedule that was required for consistent Twitch streaming. So YouTube seemed like a really, really great avenue for me to continue making, vi making videos, um, putting content out there, but doing it more on my own schedule and talking about a couple more eclectic things. I think if you were part of the earlier Twitch streams, uh, some of the best content was the unboxing, the design breakdowns, as well as just some of my random thoughts. So that's kind of why we're, we're doing YouTube today. And one of the comments I received or a couple comments I received was uh, on the room tour was offering to buy my Contax T2. And I'm not selling it, but I thought this would be a great time to talk about uh, the Contax T2. And I mean, I'm sure you've heard of this camera at length at nauseum at this point in time. And, you know, if you're looking for that title, is it overhyped? I'm telling you within the first two minutes of the video, yes, it's overhyped. What people want for this camera nowadays is insane. In my opinion, it's definitely not worth the price. Uh, and there's, you know, there's a couple of reasons why this camera particularly is top of mind for me. One, I read an article in the New York Times that was sent to me, I think by my friend Tyler, talking about how people are returning to things like cool pics and old school digicams. And um, not to mention Essence, a giant sort of e-commerce global retailer had actually done a project where they retooled or refinished a set of Contax T2s and they are selling them or were selling them for 7,500 Canadian dollars, which is insane. That is such an astronomical price. Um, and if you're not familiar with the Contax T2, it was always kind of an insider's point and shoot camera. It's a fantastic unit and you used to be able to snag them for a couple hundred dollars. But as uh, celebrities and models like Kendall Jenner and Lisa from Blackpink started shooting with it, it sort of became so overhyped that, you know, could it ever live up to the hype, to the, to the price that people are asking for? No, there's no way. But it is still a great camera. There's a lot of great things, a lot of things to hate as well, a lot of really finicky nuances. And I thought the best way to actually talk about the camera would be for me to show you guys some of the photos that I took with it when I last used it. And the last time I did use it was in 2019 in a trip to Asia. Um, me and my partner went to Hong Kong and Japan. So obviously super photogenic. There's a lot of great things to shoot there. And the trip was about almost two weeks. And I think I went through about 12 rolls of film. Film is super expensive these days too. So that's probably the main reason why I'm not shooting film anymore as well as the cost to process it. And you know, when you think about where these photos end up at the end of the day, I have piles of negatives. And for me to just post them on Instagram or even look at them on a little laptop screen or my phone, truthfully, is it worth it? No, no way. The photos are fantastic. The way light is treated and it, you know, it rolls off and, and creates these really soft edges, really, really lovely. But just with the cost of film these days, I can't afford to keep up with it or I don't want to keep up with it. And that's why I ended up switching to my Ricoh GR3. That being said, I'm shooting on my new body for YouTube, which is the Sony a7 IV. Really happy with it as well. So, you know, pros and cons, lots to talk about. Why don't we just get into it? We'll go over some of the photos that I shot. And um, I didn't I didn't do a great job of labeling which film grade I shot each photo on, but I have a pretty good inkling as to which film stock is which shot. So we can talk about that as well and, and what really works well with this camera. So let's get into it. Contax T2, a designer's perspective on the most overhyped camera, the most overhyped point and shoot in the world. 
One cool thing that I also have um, a little bit of background as to how I actually got this camera was I bought it off my friend Brian and he actually bought it off our friend Howie. But what's really remarkable is that it still has or I still have the original pamphlet that came with the Contax T2. If you know about the camera, it came out in 1990, which is remarkable. It's it's already 30 years, 30 some odd years old. Um, and I even have uh, this repair receipt from a place in New York and you can see it's uh, it was repaired by someone named Andrew Cohen and the place is called Nippon Photo Clinic Inc on 37th West 39th Street and you know one of the things that people really hate about this camera or why it's really finicky is one obviously a lot of people don't know how to repair it but the the parts are just really hard to source they tend to blow out it's a it's not a what I would call uh, a solid rock. It is, it is fragile, mind you. I when I travel with it, I use it. I put it in my bag. I throw it. I don't treat it super preciously. But I know that one day, um, when this thing goes, if I keep using it, that might be it. You can see here the labor was 170, and the parts were 35 dollars, and that was done in 2017. So I'm sure that the prices have gone up since then. Okay, why don't we just get right into it? So this image here is close to the Shibuya Scramble, I believe, really close to the subway station. And um, my typical style of photography is street style. I like to shoot people doing everyday activities, but you can see when you're trying to capture people, um, you know, in their natural habitat or you want to pull your camera out fast and this is going to be a reoccurring theme the focus on this camera tends to throw a little far you know you sometimes hear people calling it the wandering focus which is sort of a, a key quirk of this camera so you can see the two subjects in the front um, a little out of focus they were a little close even though i probably would have done a large um, a very high f-stop here this is a lovely portrait of a gentleman a sushi chef in Roppongi Hills that we went to. It was a great restaurant, great time. But here you can see as well, it was a low light situation. I actually used the flash. And when you do use the flash, um, it forces the shutter speed at one over 30, which isn't super fast. You're not always gonna get those tack sharp images that you might be used to in the broad daylight. You can see the focus is a little back. So even though I had composed this, even though I had asked for this portrait, and um, took my time to set it up. The focus isn't always gonna be perfect. I remember reading an article back in the day that talked about how you can actually hack the camera, but that was super old. I don't think anyone's hacking up Contax T2s these days just because of the, the value of them. And here we can see a similar issue, um, you know, this, this shot of bikes. I love the verticality and just the repetition of this shot, but the focus is on the bikes in the back when I can almost, guarantee I was I was trying to keep the bikes in front at focus so uh, you can just see why you're not always going to get that perfect shot especially to as a designer um, you know being able to get that perfect shot or click shutter the shutter a million times um, it's it's just something you get have to get used to and obviously this is not just a product of the context c2 this is it's a product of all film but it's also one of the reasons why i've shied away and sometimes it's just so disappointing when you think you really nail a shot and you get back your roll and it, and it didn't turn out and i know that's kind of the magic that's kind of the appeal of of shooting on film but i quickly found out that it wasn't necessarily for me um, really love the focus here. Shot this on the subway. Uh, someone taking a quick little snooze, but you know, you can just see how soft the focus rolls off when you have two objects. Uh, obviously the doors here being framed, especially on the left-hand side, you can see how soft that rolls off and the focus managed to hit. So I, I really like this image. This one, I'm almost positive was shot on Portra 400. I brought a lot of Portra to this trip and the price has gone up since then but you can just see the colors the, i want to make this clear by the way these photos are all unedited so you can just see how rich the reds are and one thing that i've always loved about film is in digital photography you really get uh a realistic almost too realistic depiction of all the colors so all these reds in reality because of the weathering because of the light 
they all would have been slight micro shades uh, of, of difference. But here, the film tends to kind of bring them together and you get this really uniform kind of red, uh, especially from a distance. It, it really looks lovely. Here was uh, a shot. I just really loved how many squares were kind of going on, especially with the cube vans. So you can see here uh, the the sky is completely blown out, but I think this really adds to the composite composition. It doesn't take any um, it doesn't add any distractions with uh, with the sky. Obviously, that's blown out, but you can just see even too. There's a remarkable amount of detail in the shadows still. Um, which which I really appreciate. While the highlights are still blown out, the shadows really look great. Here is actually in Hong Kong. So this is this was shot with Cinestill 800, I believe, and you can tell that um, by its signature look around the lights, the halation, the sort of red um, diffusion from the lights. And this is a super noisy grain, but this is you know if if you're familiar with Cinestill 800, this is definitely the type of look uh, that you're going for. So. I actually think this shot turned out great. One thing that I love to capture in Asia is, for, I don't know, the cars just seem cleaner there. There are more lights maybe, but the reflections off cars are always really dazzling to me. So I, I tend to shoot a lot of cars, especially taxis. I, I find that they just look fantastic. So you can see here, this is not using the flash. Um, and so I was able to, I think I used infinite focus and using Cinestill 800, you get like a really, really lovely look. Here too, we can see a car in motion, kind of has that one car Y vibe, uh, especially with the, the yellow sort of overtones. So this was another image. You'll also notice too, and I don't know if it was a result of Instagram or, you know, I don't know what to chalk it up to, but I actually do tend to shoot quite a lot of vertical photos and i never noticed that until i was compiling these these sets of images for this video so that's something <laughs> i maybe need to work on i love this shot here toronto sports um <laughs> obviously i'm from toronto it was hilarious to see this in hong kong but apparently this is a pretty big branch or you know franchise if you will um but yeah i i just really love the the color variation here and how it sort of rendered it on the sort of middle to left hand side we have this very green sort of hue but on on the right hand side we get a lot of these reds um and and points of saturated green to kind of draw your eye through so this was kind of like a really fun quick snapshot here we have some more just demonstrating how the Contax T2 captures the light. And, you know, obviously I understand that a lot is going to have to do with the, the type of film, but I've, I've shot many types of film on this camera. And generally speaking, I haven't gotten any really bad results unless the focus sort of wanders, which is really great. That being said, I keep saying this, one of the major reasons why I don't shoot film anymore is the price. It's super prohibitive. And when I end up processing the photos, generally they end up on my Instagram or a story. And then after that, I hardly ever look at them. I never print them out. So that really put into question why I was paying so much money just for a look when I could get a similar look if I wanted to with digital um, through some processing or more importantly, embracing the actual native look of how an image uh, looks. So you'll hardly ever see me trying to emulate film anymore on a digital sense. Um, I really like just leaning into the, the strengths of a medium. Um, but you know, you'll notice too that people these days are really talking about how they hate the iPhone algorithm. Is the iPhone algorithm too heavy handed with photos? processing yes i actually think so i really don't like how new iphone photos look so i'm starting to bring my um, cameras around with me and that's why cameras are still a really important part of my workflow even though the iphone camera is fantastic here we see a really awesome portrait of some gents playing uh games in the streets i thought this was just a really killer shot and you can see it's a little out of focus the back is sort of what's probably most in focus i wish i could have gotten the <laughs> the guy with the white polo just a little bit more sharp but uh still a really great shot and i think i have this one digital as well 
So I think I managed to capture the focus there. This was close to Harajuku, I wanna say outside of Kith. This was a couple of skaters. They had a ton of Supreme on. I just thought they looked so cool. I asked to take their photo. They look so gnarly. I love their energy. And to me, this is really where the contact shines. Portraits, street style, and um, you know, because I had asked them to pose or I asked them for the photo, I managed to land the focus on this one. So have the the cat here in the middle with the green cap, super sharp, but you can still see some motion blur on the side with the guy with the button up on the left. And I really think that that adds to the energy of this photo and you can almost sense their mischievousness. So these guys were killing it. Those guys are super dope. Um, these are also in no order particularly i think they're just by <laughs> sorted by however i pasted them into this folder so uh, we're jumping back and forth here we're back in hong kong and you can just see how it captures the glossiness of the metallic um or on the glass i should say on the car down at the bottom off the sign i just thought that was super super lovely not much more to say about this photo here was a place called supreme coffee no affiliation to the actual brand supreme um and this was another portrait as well so just really love the warm tones here i can almost guarantee this was done on portrait 400 kodak just telling by the tones um to me that is probably the best film that you can use on this camera i don't know why it just seems to be one of those magic combinations where if you're using that film on this camera the photos just turn out great here's another portrait of uh, this is close to Harajuku as well. Some school kids coming out of a vintage shop. I just thought this looked cool. And this is sort of a reoccurring theme in my uh, street style photography. Love um, shooting people in their natural habitats, just acting natural, acting goofy. For some reason, it, it brings me a lot of joy. This was actually, I think he was Australian. He was a massive dude actually coming to finish up his leg tattoos in Japan. And I believe he was from Australia. So really love seeing this. This was in a ragtag, uh, a vintage shop in close to Harajuku at the base as well. Okay, so here's what I was sort of talking about with the greens. Um, you notice that there's a couple of like green to yellow tones going on in this photo. We have the foliage on the left hand side. We have this car on the right. We kind of have these green shadows above it and we have this yellow um, bike. So if this was shot on digital, these would all feel very disparate, very separate and they would almost feel very um, like not even related at all. But because the way this camera, the film captures light, it does a great job of sort of bringing them closer together. So they all sort of feel related. If I was to correct this, I might change the tone a bit of either the foliage or some of the green to sort of unify some of these colors. But I really like what's going on here. Um, and it's kind of, I just noticed now that there's a bit of yellow in the, the person on the scooters jacket so a lot of really great yellow and green tones really really like this shot here's another photo as well i just thought this was super cool from a typography standpoint uh, i think some of the letters had started to fade but they just look super trippy they kind of look like experimental type so i really like that here's my friend taka unfortunately you can see once again that the focus even though this was perfectly lit even though i felt like i was at a good distance it just didn't hit his face uh, he was working for VisVim at the time. I believe he works for Snow Peak now. So I was visiting him at the FIL store, but I would have loved to have had this in focus. I haven't seen Taka in a while. And all I have is this blurry photo. Mind you, it still looks great. Here's a couple of school kids on a giant um, brown. I almost said Rilakkuma. This is brown from Line Friends. So <laughs> you can really see all the hand prints here. I thought it was super funny. I thought it was a kind of a crazy photo. This is another portrait as well. So unfortunately, um, you know, this is gonna be a reoccurring theme. The focus just doesn't hit and you don't have a million shots to try and nail it. You can't even check back obviously. So it's, um, you know, I, I know I keep repeating myself about this, but for me, some people, some people find it, uh, a quirk of the camera, I actually find it really annoying. And it's one of the reasons why I was consistently frustrated with this camera. Here we can see some more Cinestill 800. So this is super noisy. Look at the grain here, um, really, really noisy, but I just love how the lights look. Uh, super halated, uh, especially the ones on the left-hand side. And you just get that 
awesome red glow just a super cool shot this is just a random restaurant in an alley um same film stocks and it's still 800 this time this was in motion i think i whipped this out quickly just because i like shooting cars but i really actually do like the motion blur here i think it gives it a lot of energy and you get the drag because um shooting this wide open the shutter speed is quite slow but you know use this to great effect this was a group of business people having fun I think they were pretty wasted. They just came back from like some sort of business dinner. This was late at night. You can see the Cinestill glow as well, but they were just having a great time. And you, the, the awesome thing about Cinestill 800 is that while the highlights tend to be super red, the shadows and the darker parts of the image get this really teal kind of cast. So you can really see that hard at work here in the shadows. You get that teal contrast to that red. Okay, here's an awesome shot, Cinestill 800. Here's a photo I'm very happy with. I'm really, really glad that this one turned out. You can see that the focus is right on the chef's face here. This was at Narokio. This guy's a bit of a legend, um, but love the pose, love the energy, love the colors here. This photo I'm very, very happy with. This is, uh, this is a fantastic photo. This is probably one of the best portraits I've ever taken, even though the gent didn't speak English. Here as well, you can see the uh, some of the offerings that people brought to the restaurant. There was a ton of money up top. If you can see uh, the 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 ten the there's a lot of ten thousand yen bills. There's t there's <laughs> thousand yen bills. It's a great scene. A lot of money. A lot of people showing respect for the chef and the staff here at this restaurant. Here's another shot as well. So really happy with this. Here's Taka, like I uh, like I was saying before, and for whatever reason, it, it this night it just seemed like the the focus was catching. So you can see here, even though it was much darker, I managed to stick this. I don't believe this had flash, even though I, the highlights look a little artificial. So maybe I did, um, but that might have something to do with it. The flash is also quite battery intensive so if you are traveling with this thing i would encourage you to bring an extra battery or two um this is some of the kind of the naughty signs that you might see at in shinjuku at any given time i don't know if this was Shin shinjuku actually it might have been shibuya again but just wanted to demonstrate that red and teal look that you get from sinistil 800 so really really cool look Yep, once again, you can see here. And this time, because there was so there was so much light, the grain doesn't feel as severe, but we still get that really dramatic glow. It almost, you know what? It was raining. I can see the umbrellas here, which adds to the ambiance to the to the look of this photo and it just creates a really awesome mood. So really, really stoked on this one as well. Here's another quirk of the camera that isn't in my opinion, such a fun thing. It might be my specific camera, but it feels like it was prone to light leaks. And this isn't the only image that had it, but if light leaks, um, and what a light leak is, is just on the back, light actually getting through uh, the case and, and imprinting right on the film. If this is something that bugs you, this red, stri red stripe right across the top, um, you know, that's also gonna be something that you'll have to consider. Mind you, a lot of people think it looks good. I don't think it looks particularly bad in this instance, especially because there is red. Um, but yeah, kind of a, an interesting quirk of the camera. Here is a photo that I feel like is not so successful. And you know, whether this is due to it being a 38 millimeter, here's where I feel like the camera doesn't shine. I don't feel like it's great for capturing sort of wide shots or disparate shots. Um, this composition, it's not super great. I wanted to snap a quick one of some of the rock abilities at Yoyogi Park, but the, you know, it's just not doing much. It's not super close. You know, I don't really know what I'm trying to be focusing on here. So this is not a great shot. And in general, I would say that the shots, um, where I feel like it shines the most is in my opinion, when you're much closer than this, but I didn't really want to get in their business because, uh, that would have been rude. Here's a good one. You know, ideally I would have liked to have gotten lower and, and shoot this, but I, I got this on the go. This was a couple of uh, construction workers enjoying a nice, well-deserved cigarette break here. So I, I love the emotion on their faces. And you can see, even though it was definitely really bright, you can see that the highlights still have quite a bit of detail on the road past the 
their heads above. So, you know, like I said, this camera loves light. You almost can't overexpose it, which sounds a little bit ridiculous, but it's true. Shoot as, with as much light as you can on this camera. Here as well, ah, oh, man, the richness of the colors on this photo, I, I think just really sell it for me. These were these really cool sort of knitted covers on these pillars, but I just, ah, oh, I, I, I love the colors. I loved how rich they were, the, the color grading on this. Well, there is no color grading. This is actually just how it was out the negative. Um, just really, really does it for me. So this is one of the one of the reasons why I would love to get back into this, but it's just not economically feasible at the time or at this point in time. If film takes a dramatic dip, which I doubt it will, maybe we can start to dust this camera off. But for the time being, it's gonna it's gonna stay locked away. It is very fun to go through these photos though. Here is the giant Buddha. This is back in Hong Kong. So I just really love how the sky just sort of blanks out and you get this really, really great isolation on the statue itself. Really graphic um, and really, really stark. So fantastic image here. Here's another one. I think this was close to Lantau. Um, fishing village just love the colors going on here so saturated i'd probably straighten this out if i was to edit this it seems like it's leaning just a little bit to the right but unintentionally so the reds the yellows just treated so uh, fantastically and it kind of goes down to the yellow bench which i i thought was really cool and i just think this guy's jacket is is really killer here we have another one so not quite in focus but just the reds seem to really pop. I know this is more so a product of the the film stock, but you know, here we are, these Coke crates. I just think they look really, really great. I also, you know, outside of portraits, I really like shooting um, inanimate objects. So I just thought this was a, a really nice little snap. Kind of dystopic seeing some of the garbage around here, but you know, nonetheless. Um, finally, as we come around the bend, we can see two people hard at work. Once again, catching the motion blur. Um, not quite in focus, not super sharp, but I do like the energy here. It was raining that day, so you can almost feel the rain, the crappy weather uh, through this shot. And once again, looking at the colors, bringing those colors together, you know, that bucket and that red flag in the back in reality probably weren't that close but because of the film we're also seeing it with the teals of the cart and the you know the sign or whatever that is in the back um, they're looking very similar so it just adds a level of graphicness and polish that you don't normally get or artistic polish i should say from a super digital photo which i really love um these last couple shots here you'll notice they look a little different these were shot on slide film so i believe this was provia or one of the Fujifilm ones, but you'll notice how different it looks. Um, this is also a stock that craves light. It's a positive film as opposed to a negative one, but why people really like this is the really lovely saturated colors and the high amounts of detail. So you can just see this almost looks digital. Um, it's super, super crisp, I wanna say, but you can, I don't know, there's something just about these colors that that are fantastic. Uh, the blues, the reflection off the car here, uh, just really, really phenomenal. Here as well, it just has that sort of really cinematic look, especially to the way it was cropped. This was on an overpass. You can see how it's cutting off some of the cars. And I just love the, the I don't know, it's almost like a, I don't want to say hyper real. That's not, that's definitely not the term, but these, the slide film is fantastic. It was really hard to get it developed because there wasn't anyone locally in Toronto that was de developing slide film. So I kind of resented this role for that. But when I got these colors back, I was very, very pleased. So it's something I would consider shooting again. Here too, you can just see how cool the film is. A much different look from the, Co the Kodak Portra 400. Um, but yeah, just really, really lovely detail, really high resolution film. Oh man, I love the reds here, it's so saturated. Oh, yeah, this is a great shot. So obviously this has less to do, I think with the camera itself, but that 38 millimeter to me is just a magic sweet spot. It's really, really great. It's not quite as punched in as a 50. It's just a hair tighter than 35, which gives you almost an intimacy that um, you, you're not really used to seeing. It just puts you a little bit closer. So that's probably my favorite part about the camera. Um, 
and you can see here, this isn't super wide shot. It's kind of punched in, but I think with this tree sort of being so graphic and so dark, cutting this, this row of red flags, it, it does a really great job. Here's more, you know, notice again, not super tack sharp here on the Fox, but just love the reds. I think it's actually probably focused on the feet as opposed to the head now that I'm taking a look at this, but the, the blue cast on this film is, is phenomenal. Finally, as we, as we start to end here, I think this is the th second or third last. Um, this is just a generic subway shot, but because of the dramatic difference on the overhead, the, the shadows, I, I just love how horizontal this composition is and the lines are really working with it. So even, even though it, it's cut off, it kind of frames it and, and creates this cinematic look again. Finally, um, here at the end, you'll notice that it, this film grade really does suffer in the low light. It is not, uh, I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't recommend using this one at low light. This is in an arcade and you can just see it's really struggling. I wouldn't think this is a great shot, but I just wanted to throw it in here, um, for demonstration purposes. Oh, sorry. We have one more shot. I didn't realize, um, this one here. I think this was at Standing Sushi Bar. Fantastic little place. It's a little dark, it's a little underexposed. I think maybe if I was to go bring this back, I would see if we could, you know, lift the shadows a bit. But I do really like the mood. It feels like it's out of a movie and there's just so much character on this chef's face that it's hard not to like this photo. There's a reason why I included it. Just wanted to jump in here quick again. I'm recording this after the fact. I, I only remembered now and I don't know how I just remembered, but a major major flaw of this camera and i don't know if it's because my camera specifically is damaged or i loaded the film wrong but there were multiple rolls where it started to reel in prematurely um even so much as only getting 10 shots on a roll and the camera would start to reel it back which meant that obviously the the roll was wasted there was no way to stop it so major major flaw of the camera maybe mine is damaged i have read in other places that people have experienced this but there's no way to tell if it's uh, a flaw of the camera or maybe it was the film something's up obviously there aren't a lot of experts anymore on this camera so that's something worth noting as well Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. That was my take, my, a designer's take on the Contax T2. Like I said, is it worth it? It's really hard to justify with the price of film these days. And knowing what I use photos for, I have tend to lean back into the digital space. Um, the irony of, you know, composing a photo, getting it, you know, buying the film, getting it developed, scanned just for it to be posted on Instagram. I didn't think it was worth it no shame if you do. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Let me know what else you want to see. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and thank you so much for your support. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.